welcome to the One Soccer Nation podcast. Today we have the pleasure of speaking with Maya Antoine. Maya is a professional footballer currently playing in Sweden for IFK Nor Shopping. <laughs> Maya, thank you for taking the time to speak with us today. You know, we're so excited to have you on here just to share your journey and, you know, motivate other aspiring young players. Um, how are you and how are you feeling today? I feel great today. Um, I was a little bit tired from a, a training session earlier this morning, but other than that, I feel great. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Um, can we just start off by talking about um, what age did you start playing soccer and why did you choose soccer as your sport to play? Yeah. Uh, I started playing soccer at the age of three, and I started mainly because um, of my older brother, and he got thrown into a bunch of different sports when he was younger and I just wanted to do everything he did so when I say I wanted to do everything he did I tried to do everything that he did but I enjoyed playing soccer a lot more than any of the other sports that he uh, was playing like he did swim he did karate he did taekwondo I tried it and I was like yeah I want to do it because he's doing it and I was like I don't want to do this anymore <laughs> but <laughs> But with soccer, no, I stuck with it. Uh, he absolutely hated it, which was hilarious to me thinking yeah. about it now. He would sit on the field and pick dandelions. He was that kid. Um, but no, I I grew to love the game um, from a very young age. And also because most of my family enjoys watching the sport as well. So, yeah. Um, did he end up like um, doing any sports professionally? Absolutely not. No, he <laughs> doesn't like sports at all. Oh wow! Yeah, no. <laughs> he so... likes skateboarding. Okay, he likes skateboarding, and he likes hiking. He's he's more of a, Advent- I guess, like adventure style, okay. uh, fitness rather than okay sports fitness. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> at least you know he's still active. You know, like that's cool. Because yeah. I feel like with hiking, it's like you get to go to different places and they're so pretty. Like yeah. well, if you're a nature person. That's if you're a nature person, but do you like kind of like outdoorsy type stuff? Or I not? love that. I yeah. love outdoorsy type stuff. Okay. Uh, absolutely love it. That's why I'm glad like I'm here in Sweden because yeah. um, being close to uh, Norway where there's a bunch of hiking spots, yeah. uh, oh, excited wow. to go explore those options. Yeah. Oh, wow. That's nice. Yeah. That's really nice. Um, that's really nice to have because I feel like where I lived um, in France, it was more like, like uh, farmland. It wasn't, and like the city was. It wasn't too far, but it was like a really small city, small town. Um, so I didn't really have the options to go like hiking or stuff. But there was like a lot of like paths, like ride your bike and walk. So it was just it was a little different. But I wish there was like some hiking paths. I would have did. I would have did that. That would have been so fun. But, oh yeah. <laughs> Um, so could you just kind of tell us about how your recruiting process was and why you chose um, to go to the University of Vanderbilt? Um, my recruiting process was, I guess, for, I thought it was a lot different than some other friends that I've heard their experience about. Um, I had the opportunity to play for uh, the Canadian Women's National Team at the U15 level. Um, and because I got that opportunity, I got recruited based off that. So I had, um, teams reach out to my coaches, my club coaches, um, because I had that experience instead of like going to showcases tournaments or anything like that. Like I did play in a few of those. Like I played in the Umbro showcase. I feel like everyone played in the Umbro showcase at that point in time, but, um, I didn't get really uh, recruited from that uh, it was more or less from my national team experience my junior level national team experience and uh, I actually didn't really know much about uh, Vanderbilt University before I uh, chose to go there but at that point in time the program had just gotten a new coach and they had just had a really successful season so I wanted to be a part of something new and growing um like I didn't want to be I was still wanted to compete uh so that's why I was glad to be in the conference that I was I was in the Southeastern Conference um the SEC 
and it I definitely grew a lot while I was there maybe not in the ways that I thought I was going to grow but definitely grew a lot um, during that process that's great um we kind of had a similar experience too like going to Maryland because we we didn't really necessarily want to go to like a top program we kind of wanted to go somewhere where it was growing and we kind of wanted to like help make a difference and make a name for ourselves um Mm -hmm. So yeah, we kind of had a, a similar experience, like when our, our little like recruiting process and or commitment process. Um, but yeah, so was there anything in that Vander- at Vanderbilt that like stood out to you? Um, I just loved the area. It's a very very pretty campus. Um, I'd say if you ever go to Nashville, go to Nashville for a weekend and just walk through campus during the fall or even the summer or the spring, like any point in time where it's like nice outside. Yeah. it's really really pretty mm-hmm. um and that was kind of what stuck out to me I liked how close everything was like yeah. within like full distance um and like I didn't have to worry about getting a car or anything like that in order to move around campus um obviously it's highly rated academically so that was one of the reasons why I also chose to go there but I think it was part of it being has they has a, a slogan. Their three main words is uh, the city, the degree, the FDC, and I feel like that's a lot of the reason why um, most people go to Vandy, especially um, as a student athlete. So yeah. Okay. Okay. I didn't. I've never heard of that before. That's so funny. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's so funny. Um, so what would you say was like your favorite thing going to the university? of Vanderbilt um my favorite thing it, ah I almost want to say like the people I met there I feel like I met like a I kind of stepped into a world where I would have never stepped into if that makes sense mm-hmm. and that's probably because I think one of my friends was in a class she was doing a business minor and I think they they took a poll of like their parents' wages, and I think I want to say roughly around sixty percent of the population of that goes to Vanderbilt University is within the upper twenty percent. Okay, wow. So, okay. being around people who have money yeah. not, is like it's like really weird. I think it's really weird. <laughs> It, it makes you it makes you be like holy crap I would have never I would have never done this like I would would be caught dead doing any of this stuff yeah. um so it's very interesting it makes you gives you a different perspective uh on I just say like probably life in general um and I'd say like because of the type of environment that uh Vanderbilt is it was also incredibly competitive so I had people who had been had lived in like six different countries and I'm like what the heck? I'm like you're only 19 like what do you mean yeah. you lived in these all these different countries it's like no it's because like their parent is like super successful in the business world and they travel with them and I'm like whoa whoa wow like you're so like their perspective at least for the for those for, in this case for those people like was a lot more like world open not saying that there weren't people who came from super small rural towns. There were those people as well. And I guess for them, like, it was more of a shock that, like, Vanderbilt University was more of a shock to them than it was to me. Uh, but no, I'd say just overall meeting different people, like, their experiences, different walks of life, I guess. Very different walks of life. <laughs> I feel like that's so interesting because, like, I feel like they're they're just living a, a whole different world. And they're like, in a whole different yeah. world, <laughs> in a whole different world. And you're like, and you're thinking to yourself, okay. Most people say, like, okay, like I'm going home during for Thanksgiving break, or I'm spending with a friend for Thanksgiving break, mm-hmm. and they're like, oh yeah, like we're actually going to the extra south, and I'm like. Wow. <laughs> Okay, 
<laughs> because you have money, right? Okay, cool. Uh, thanks for flexing on me. I'm broke. <laughs> thanks for thanks for reminding me, just in case I didn't. I just forgot. Yeah, thanks. That's funny. so funny. Yeah, that is funny. I feel like when you go to university, you meet like just different types of people, and it kind of just opens your eyes to like, I guess, different people's lifestyles. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it's it's really interesting though because some of those people that are maybe like the total opposite of you, you like end up being like your really good, really good friends. So yeah, yeah, it's really funny. Um, but yeah, so what do you think your biggest lesson was like throughout college? Um, biggest lesson was both. Uh, I get annoyed because I feel like it's super cheesy, but like control your controllables. Mm -hmm. um and a lot of that was I'd say like on the field versus off the field because I feel like there's always there's always this stress of yeah like they want you to stay as focused as you possibly can in training while it's still happening but in the back of your mind you're like oh crap I still have that five page essay to write I still have an exam on Thursday like all these things are floating in the back of your mind while the um while you're in the middle of training and just staying focused like on the task at hand I'd say is like super important and then like maximizing your time as much as you possibly can which was obviously difficult <laughs> I, don't any, I don't know anybody who like went through college as a student athlete and was like yeah that was so easy <laughs> no it wasn't it wasn't that you're lying to everybody don't do that don't lie to everybody like that it was hard you probably there are definitely tons of nights where you only slept for like four hours and then had to wake yeah. up and go to training like no it wasn't it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows it really really wasn't yeah that's funny wait what was your your major in college um Vanderbilt calls it uh medicine health and society okay. it's basically it's kind of similar to like a public health degree and you smush it with sociology okay okay yeah well, that's cool but I feel like that's a lot of like reading and a lot of like research right <laughs> so much so so much I it was such a nightmare when I would see you like the reading, the homework, the plans, like for the week. And I'm like, okay, this one only has, I have three readings. I'm like, okay, this one only has eight pages. I can do that. This one has 10. Okay. And then you, she throws the 25 page one at the end and you're like, I won't be reading 25 pages because my eyes will be crossing by the second page. Like, you know, you know this. Yeah. Like when I was, when I was doing my master's and that's the kind of stuff they would give us, like every week we'd have to read like, uh, like 20 page articles. I had to learn to like, maximize, your time. like figure out where the oh, most yeah. important information is going to be because I was not reading just every no. week. Like mm -mm. it's crazy. Yeah, no, you really had to learn how to just improvise and, you know, kind oh, of yeah. finesse like, through it. So For I sure. definitely understand. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. improvising to the max yes <laughs> literally <laughs> like i learned to not prepare for presentations basically um, if that makes sense yeah. so i wouldn't i wouldn't i wouldn't i'd practice my presentation but i wouldn't actually practice what i was gonna say in the moment i was practice the information that i yeah. really needed to like that would be harder for me to remember so yeah. once i remembered like that then i would just go to presentations and wing them 100 percent. Oh, like wow. i did care because <laughs> i was like i don't have the time i don't yeah. have the time i simply yeah. do not have the time <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna do what i need to do in order to at least get a b in this class and i and i'm glad this actually helped i took a public speaking class and after i took that public speaking class every single presentation that i winged after that always i was like always. i'm never complaining <laughs> I'm never ever complaining. I will tell, I will recommend to every single person to at least do one public speaking class. You might hate it, but it'll yeah. pay off so much later on. Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. We have to, our school, ha they made it mandatory, mandatory? for us to take a class. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. I actually enjoyed it. I actually liked the assignments we had to do. But yeah, yeah, the assignments were like fun. It wasn't like too serious, but yeah, mm-hmm. like I think we had to like pick a topic that like either you were for or against it, and you kind of just had to convince like the audience why they should believe like what you're saying, I guess. I actually thought yeah. that was fun. Yeah, I really enjoyed that class. But um, let's kind of go into um, like all your accolades. Like you got um, second team All SEC United. You got um, preseason watch list for defenders. Um, all Southeast Region first team and first team All CC. Um, how did you maintain that consistency throughout your like college career? And like, what motivated you to, um, you know, um, stay at the top of your game? Um, it probably helped that my freshman year I got hurt so I already started at the very bottom Um, so it was just really a matter of coming back from that um and just I guess it was more or less like refinding myself being comfortable playing again like with an injury that it was my ankle and once you do your ankle it's never really the same ever again so Uh, it's just Really, it was really just coming back from that and then gaining back my confidence uh, going into my sophomore year. And then that was COVID year as well. And I ended up, I think I play, ended up playing quite a bit my sophomore year, which helped a lot rebuild my confidence. And then by the time my junior year rolled around, um, not only was I confident in the way that I played, like I was confident enough in the way that I played that so so much that I was able to help and guide the rest of my teammates um I think that was my biggest role at that point in time like my junior and senior year was being more or less a guide uh for my teammates in the back being that big loud voice in the back um for everybody so that we could all stay be on the same page press together drop together all those good things but it was it was definitely definitely hard um I'd say like to stay on top of to stay consistent especially with everything going on between uh school and soccer but um, I'd say having my teammates there for me definitely helped a whole lot uh they were as much as I was the backbone for them on the field they were the backbone for me like just to keep going day in and day out yeah we could definitely like relate to freshman year because we both got her our freshman year she literally got hurt a week after I did isn't that so funny <laughs> but I tore my ACL and yeah like it was it was rough Tam, like when I tore my ACL it was rough because I honestly before like tearing my ACL I never even knew that ACL injuries were like a big such a big thing for females mm-hmm. so yeah like just the rehab process it definitely took a toll on me but like like you said, having your teammates kind of helped as well. And I, there was also another girl who tore her ACL before coming to college or her freshman year of college. So it was nice because we're both doing PT together. Um, mm. So that helped a lot. But yeah. Yeah, the freshman year injury is no joke. Freshman year, freshman no. year injury was crazy. Yeah, crazy. It's no joke. It definitely, it's not, it's honestly, it's not necessarily a setback, but it kind of just makes you appreciate like soccer a lot more. Yeah. It makes you appreciate it a lot more, but I feel like it makes you a lot more tougher too, like mentally, like. For sure. Yeah. So do you have any like pregame rituals that you do? I, not, not really. I don't. I try to avoid doing things like that because yeah. then if something messes it up, then that's oh. going to that's gonna mess up my whole day. I don't <laughs> want to do that. I try to avoid doing that at all costs. Like, I know certain people like like need to wear like uh, their game day sports bra or their game, you know what I mean? I'm like, I can't. That's uh, I need to be able to do the least amount possible. Yeah in order for me to function. The other thing I do is that I need to make sure that I put all my left left stuff on first and then my right. So like I'll do socks on the left side, then my shin guards, then my cleats, and then do the right side. Oh. Yeah. 
that's that's all honestly I, I do the sports route thing too <laughs> <laughs> but it just gotta be a black sports bro it doesn't matter i just okay, have to work yeah what that's, I that's, that's fine Wear the black let, me, uh, let, let me have my ritual. Thank no, you. that's totally fine. No, I'm not. I'm. I'm saying. I'm saying like, like a specific. Like, there's only one of that one. Oh, no, no, no. That's what I'm saying. That's why I'm like, no, 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 no. no. That one. Because no. yeah, it's gonna like mess up like how you're. How you're yeah. What if you forget your sports bra? Like, no, that's too much. The end of the world. Yeah, yeah that's too much. <laughs> <laughs> um what advice would you give to freshmen or sophomore to kind of help them balance um academics and you know being a college athlete you know from from your experience i'd say talk to your older classmen like as much as you possibly can because especially those who are doing if they're doing the same like uh academic path as you so that they could advise you on like where you can ease your load your work your academic load with the season because um depending on what you're doing they'll know better obviously you you have academic advisors but and they'll tell you like classes that you need to take in order to complete your degree but that's just to complete your degree, like not what fits best in your schedule for you. Um, and I feel like that helps a lot of different people. I mean, like, uh, please use a uh, great my professor. That is a go to 100 <laughs> um, percent. People be avoiding other teachers classes because they know that their teacher is not a, the best professor yeah. in the entire world. And hey, you know what? Kudos to you. It's your job. You're you're a professor. That's great. That doesn't mean you're a great teacher. No offense. Yeah. But um I think definitely asking them for um for help, for feedback, both on and off the field, uh definitely helps a lot. Um I'd say like that my upperclassmen got me through uh my freshman and sophomore year especially my sophomore year that COVID year was very rough um I don't know I don't think I would have made it through through that year without them but uh yeah it was definitely for sure make strong bonds if you can with uh, the older players yeah. Yeah. I, like, yeah. I like kind of like what you mentioned about the rate my professor that is actually so important and I need to realize that till like my junior year I was just choosing random like uh professors that just went with my schedule and then yeah. in my class she's like um do you like use right my professor and I was like no I've never heard of that I'm like what well, I never even knew that existed she's like no you need to use this like because I was in a honestly I didn't have like the opportunity I didn't I got lucky I didn't have like a bad like the the professors that I chose, they were the mm -hmm. best ones. So I kind of got lucky, but like yeah. that's such a good tool to have, and you can just see like which because a professor, like uh, your teacher is like is so important, especially if you're taking like chemistry or biology. Yeah. You need to have a good teacher, or else you're not understanding. You're not gonna understand what's going on. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, I would say that is super important. But yeah, I feel like your upperclassmen are definitely like the best outlet because they've been through it all. So yeah, <laughs> they've been through it. Oh. <laughs> they know. They can even, yeah, they can even help you take like the easy classes, like you know the prerequisite cl classes that you have to take. I feel like they can help you. Oh, you can take this. You can take that. Easy mm -hmm. A. Yeah. So I definitely like that advice. Yeah. Um. So um, what would you say like? So playing in Sweden, what would you, and then, you know, I mean, sorry, you played in college and then you started professional in Sweden. Um, what were you say, like, was your major, you know, adjustments that you had to face? Like, did you face any um, um, struggles, uh, anything that you liked so far? Um, I mean, I moved to an entirely different country. Um, yes. <laughs> <laughs> where it's like that is and I did it in a very short period of time so that was 
something special. Let's just say, put it like that. Yeah. Um, it was difficult at first because there was, I mean, when you move somewhere else, there's always going to be a lot of moving parts um, and just trying to settle in to a different place where, yeah, they speak English, but it's not the first language. Um, yeah. It's, it is Swedish and trying to adjust while I guess everyone's preparing for everyone who like has either been here for a while and they know what things like things are going on. It's just a lot to deal with, I'd say, uh, when you first move to a different country, when you first when you first uh move abroad and you're playing with another team. because uh, you don't know anybody. That's I think that's also one of those things that you kind of forget about. Like not only do I not know anybody here, but like I don't have any family or any friends here who live in Sweden. So it's more or less like you're literally out there on your own. Um, so the, yeah, it was, it's well, for sure. It's definitely hard, but um, everyone here was great. They're super welcoming. Um, a lot of the Swedes uh, are extremely friendly. So that was oh, that's um, nice. yeah, that's definitely, nice. definitely helpful uh, being here. But I think being an international, uh, just in general, I feel like you need to be more, what's the term? I can't understand. <laughs> um, not assertive, but you have to advocate. Yes. Mm-hmm. You have to advocate for your, for yourself and what you need. Um, yeah, yeah. Yes. So like I was on a, like a smaller, like twin bed and I was like, okay, I, can't do this right now so like can I get a bigger bed and they couldn't get me a bigger bed but you know what they did instead they brought me another twin so now I have a king size bed and I mean (laughs) that that works (laughs) (laughs) I'm not complaining that works no that's Um, that's that's nice it's better than nothing yeah Yeah. so um like definitely advocating for yourself for what you want and need um (laughs) is probably one something that's like super important especially because if if you're out there by yourself that's very very important now the same thing happened to me that i walked to my room and i saw a twin i said um i don't know if i can sleep on this twin. like <laughs> so i asked them for a bigger bed and they were able to get it but i think like they have some connections where they can just get furniture like yeah like that no I definitely agree like if you need anything like ask for it don't be afraid to ask for things that you need because you're living abroad and you're not in a country that you're familiar with so you know get everything that you need to feel comfortable exactly like so, and you're uh, there you're there yeah. to play so yeah. like that's what's most important so you want to make sure that you can you provide whatever is most important for you so that you can perform the best you possibly can Exactly, exactly. Yeah, because I also, because me and my sister were both um, vegetarian, and in France, or the part where I was, there are big meat eaters, like, vegetarian vegetarian is not necessarily common, and, Mm -hmm. like, they didn't even know how to, like, feed me, like, I was eating, like, all carbs, like, rice and pasta, that's all I was eating in the beginning, and then I said, I kind of asked, like, um, is there any other options that I can get to eat? I can't just be eating straight carbs. (laughs) Um, I need some protein and then you know they kind of helped me out like I got, I got eggs I got like little vegetarian patties so yeah you definitely need to advocate for yourself like, you want to be as comfortable as possible you want to feel like you're feeling your best so you can play your best yeah so yeah yeah I think that's a really good point um, yeah very good point yeah what was like what has been your favorite thing about Sweden like so far um <laughs> I'd say uh, I don't know like I I don't know there's a lot of things I like about being here I think it's like the the pace of life is a lot slower <laughs> in comparison yeah. to yeah I like I like that a lot it's <laughs> not it doesn't feel like it's a rush which is both a good thing and a bad thing because if you need something to be rushed then you then people are like what's wrong with you like why like why are you acting like your house is on fire when it's not but it's like no like I need to get this done 
Um, but for every day to day life, no, it's great. Um, like I will purposely take like a longer route home walking because I can't because everyone's just strolling around and enjoying yeah. the nice weather yeah. and enjoying the sun. But yeah, no, it's, uh, it's great. I'd say like one thing that's I don't want to say like it is odd, but in particular is the, I guess it's in Ikea. They have like a, I know at least in Canada, I'm pretty sure they have it everywhere. But mm-hmm. there's the lingonberry jam. I've never heard of that. Never? never. It's made of like these, they're like these small red berries and oh. they make, the, and I didn't realize that they have this here. Well, I mean, they knew, I knew they had lingonberry jam here. But um, I didn't realize how often they put it on different foods. So like they'll put it on, they'll be putting it on, uh, they'll have like potato pancakes and oh. they'll have uh, like a sour cream or you'll have like whipped cream and the lingonberry jam. Oh. And yeah, so I'm like, oh, like this is different. So it's <laughs> partially it's trying new foods, but I didn't realize how popular lingonberry jam is here in sweden oh, wow. and that you can put it on almost anything yeah. you can put it on. great yeah. 10 out of 10 recommend 10 out of 10 okay I'm gonna try that. <laughs> <laughs> but i also liked what you said about um in, like in sweden it's very slow paced i feel like in europe when the weather's nice like everybody's oh, outside yeah. everyone <laughs> walks riding their bikes something like uh where I lived in or in France, um mm-hmm. there was like a park like next to where I lived. And every time there was always kids out there, there's families having picnics like all the time. And I just kinda loved it. I was like, wow, it makes you want to go outside too. Like <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. I, just wanna, okay. I feel like we enjoy the weather too, like, you know. Um I feel like Europe has really taught me just to like in like just like enjoy the moment like mm-hmm. I feel like I'm so used to like and like I feel like in the states and Canada like you're so used to always trying to do some get something done yeah instead of just like relaxing and just enjoying life I feel like now like I'm actually sitting outside and reading a book or something or hanging out with my friends because I'm usually just in my room watching tv or something like instead of just going outside and enjoying nature like my I feel like my roommate she's really pushed me to like not be in my room so <laughs> I really enjoyed that because I feel like I'm a whole different person now. <laughs> but yeah, what do you what do you feel like your biggest challenge has been so far playing in Sweden? Um, I want to say, I just want to say staying consistent. I like I feel like. There are days where, I mean, everybody feels like this, but there are days where you, let's say you don't play, you don't play your best in practice and you see that other player uh, who plays the same spot as you, like they had a really great day and you're like, oh, like, man, like they're getting better. Like each day, like you see that they're improving, they're getting better. It's just a matter of like knowing that, okay, even if today wasn't my best day, but what about tomorrow? Like, or earlier on this week, like I had a great training session, like focusing on not only like you are in a growth environment, you are continuing to grow and that not every day is going to be a good day, but there are, you also need to focus, be able to focus on the positives um, in a situation where, yeah, like this is, and you're all doing this for, for as a job, but this is also fun. So like making sure that you're still having fun while you're playing um obviously I mean obviously I wouldn't pick this as a career if I wasn't having fun (laughs) but um I'd say probably staying consistent and like within that same mindset of just being like okay today was a good day shake it off move on to the next one um I think that helps a lot because like when I came here um I was struggling with a like an Achilles injury like I kind of sprained it and it just kept getting re-aggravated each practice and so like the first I want to say three weeks that I was here I was in a lot of pain like moving and stuff like that like running around the field and I still practice but it just was incredibly uncomfortable um 
play on and like fighting through that like just saying like okay like yeah that was a good I had these good moments in this training session I might not have had the best when we did this drill but that's because it was I'm also in pain like my Achilles is killing me and it's stopping me from preventing it's stopping me from like doing playing 100% so once I get those moments where I do play 100% and I kill it I'm like okay I know I'm capable of this I can still bring it back like it's totally fine. I just a matter of being patient and like waiting it out, knowing that you, there is, there is going to be a time where you can um, be at your best. Yeah. yeah. You have to give yourself grace. Like, yeah. Even like you're going to have your days where it's not like your best. And I feel like instead of kind of dwelling on how you play or how you like you perform that day, like, to, like kind of dwell on like how am I gonna fix it like how am I gonna perform tomorrow um, yeah and I also had to kind of learn that this year not to kind of kind of just block out my my overthinking and the outside noise and comparing myself to the other players that may have been that I was compete that I was competing against and like when, once I stopped worrying about how they're playing and kind of just worrying about like how can I improve each each training session um then I kind of started playing a lot better and starting each game so yeah you just gotta learn it's like a learning process it's really a learning process but once you figure it out eventually you just gotta be a little patient that's all yeah 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 I feel like when you just let yourself enjoy you know playing the sport and not focus so much on your mistakes or if you had a bad training session I I feel like you you end up playing a lot better because you're just playing free um but yeah I feel like that just comes with you know building mental toughness and you know as we get older we're, we'll probably be way better at it but because we're still early in the professional game like you know we're still learning how to navigate through you know our mental you know battles so yeah mental battles are always gonna happen you just gotta learn you just have to learn what works for you and how you can navigate them the best way possible so yeah it's a journey it's really a it journey. is a journey <laughs> really it is it's really a journey but you also have um professional or not professional sorry um like experience like representing the national canadian national team um as a youth how do you feel like that has shaped you into the player you are today um i think it helped my understanding of the game like grow a lot faster than I want to say like my teammates around me like when I was playing at my club level um I think after after my first camp I was I remember going back to my the first training session with my club team and I was making passes into the these spaces and then the ball kept going out of bounds I'm like what's going on I'm like and then like oh wait like I'm I just remembered that I was playing at a different level where people were moving faster into these spaces um than my current teammates are like so I'm like okay now that I'm realizing that I have like awakened <laughs> I'm like I'm more aware of how fast that um, the ball should be moving or can move um, like how can I take advantage of um, the things that areas that I need to grow on while I'm here in this environment um, and I think because of that uh, experience that exposure I think it's helped me grow a lot not only like as a player but as a person um, I think with the national team like you get to travel uh, for periods of time away, like at home, from home, from your parents. Um, and I think that has helped, that helped ease me, especially when I was moving uh, to Tennessee for, for university. So I wasn't as nearly as homesick as some of uh, my other friends who were like, oh my gosh, like I miss being home so much. And I'm like, no, I don't miss being home. Like, yeah, sure, I miss my parents. For sure, I'd love to see them, but I'm not going to like, 
you go back and cry because I'm like, oh my gosh, I want to go home. Like, no, yeah. no, that I feel like that has helped that process. And then even to now, like moving to an entirely different country across the water. Um, so yeah. Yeah, no, I I can agree because I feel like me and my sister, we are. I feel like we're barely in Canada. Like I feel like we've been in the states for like six years and then and then we, we went overseas like I feel like we're never home and I feel like people are asking like do you guys not miss home and I'm just like yeah I miss my friends and my family but I enjoy like exploring the world and stuff so I feel like we're so used to just not being home and being yeah. in different places so you know I feel like we just get used to it and I feel like those type of stuff just prepare you for where we are now so it yeah. it kind of forces you to grow up and be more independent, like kind of figure yourself out. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, I love that. <laughs> Do you have any um? So before you like you know finish your um soccer professional career, do you have any goals or aspirations that you want to you know accomplish? Um, I would love to play for the full team the full uh, mm-hmm. national team um obviously that is <laughs> a very difficult uh spot to be in uh, especially with all the talents uh, that's currently there within the pool but honestly i'm ha- like i'm happy playing abroad i know like i have a lot of room to grow and if I keep growing and performing the way that I currently have, I think that will potentially offer open that door, uh, at least getting at least my first cap. But mm-hmm. yeah, it'll happen. It'll happen. It'll happen. It's gotta keep. <laughs> I just feel like you like for I feel like for us we just have to have like you know like a breakout season, and yeah, then you like you're set after that, and you yeah. have so much time. We're still young, you know. We're yeah. still. Young still have many years that we want to play soccer so I feel like we have time to keep working and just focusing on being our best and getting to our best our greatest potential too so yeah we just gotta keep working at it yeah Yeah, just gotta be just gotta be patient and wait for your time to shine (laughs) (laughs) do you have like a a team or place that you really want to play in as well um I don't have a team who say, but I'd love to play in Italy. Uh, I, yeah. I, why? Um, I'd probably, it's probably, I took an Italian minor when I was in at Stanford. Uh, and that's because the community where I grew up um, was extremely Italian. And um, like, he, you know how in like elementary school like you learn French because it's mandatory. Um, we learned French and Italian because the density, like the population density of kids who were like Italian descendants, was so high. I think there's only I tell me there's a class of like 25 of us. I want to say maybe only four within that class of 25 wasn't like of Italian descent. So. Mm. I grew up very much so around people of Italian descent and like learning like little things about the culture. So uh, when I was at Fandy, I was like, yeah, like I'd love to do a minor. I did the minor, um, had a great experience there with the Italian department um, and learned, actually learned a decent chunk of the language. My problem is, is that I start filtering my what I can't remember in um, Italian with French. <laughs> and it's getting worse now that I'm learning Swedish. So if I can't remember something in Swedish, then it's just going to go to Italian. And I'm like, that is not right either. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah, this is just not, it's it's a mess. It's a mess up here. But um, yeah, no, I'd love to play in Italy. At least. I actually went to Italy like, I think, when did I go to Italy? I don't remember. It was recent. But I went to Venice and Milan. It's so pretty. Yeah. So I, living there would be amazing. Yeah. yeah. Would you um, say 
would you say that you're like kind of fluent in in, in Italian or mm, I can't say I'm fluent in Italian because <laughs> that <laughs> would mean that <laughs> maybe um I was closer to being fluent maybe a year ago but like no I can't say I'm, I'm fluent in Italian I can um when pe- when characters like in movies or uh, TV shows speak Italian I don't need to look at the subtitles okay. oh. so like I have I can understand things like that like mm-hmm. when people they do like little short sound bites of things in Italian I'm like oh yeah like no I actually actually know what they're saying and I'm like oh it actually works <laughs> surprise <laughs> surprise it actually works but I can't I cannot speak Italian fluently by any no <laughs> I can definitely relate to that because uh like with French, like understanding it, I'm okay, but speaking it, yeah, no. it's a little bit of a struggle for me. It's a little bit of a struggle. <laughs> and we've been friends our whole life. That's just so yeah. sad. I've been learning from first grade to twelfth grade. And I I, sh- I should be fluent. I really should. <laughs> At least I can understand it. I'll just take that. I can understand it <laughs> for the most part. So yeah, I'll take that. But is there any advice that you would give to, you know, future aspiring professional athletes? Um, I'd say if two things. If you love it, keep playing. Uh, you'll find the places and the people that will help you grow and the community that will push you to become the best player that you possibly can. And Number two, I don't wish this on anybody, obviously, but they are kind of inev- inevitable. Um, injuries suck. Mm-hmm. Um, they are mentally exhausting. And I feel like people don't talk about that enough. They think they, people assume that, oh, you're injured, so you have more time, to, like rehab and all that stuff. Like, no, no, I'm still tired. I'm more tired. That I when I'm injured than when I am playing because you're dealing with the fact that you cannot play and then you're doing all this other stuff which isn't making you happy because what would make you happy is playing so you're constantly fighting with yourself um, back and forth between like okay I need to be patient because that's what's gonna help me get better versus I want to play. I want to go right now because I'm not happy sitting on the sidelines. So I think there's that aspect that I feel like people don't talk about a whole lot. Um, when you're being injured is that mental fatigue. I feel like you also need to remind yourself when you're, when you are injured, when you are going through those rough patches is doing things that do make you happy outside of playing. Like, Football, soccer will not is not the end all be all of your entire existence. So do if you love going to the movies, go catch a movie with your friends. Like go sit down by a lake and watch the sunset. Like <laughs> do something that's gonna make you happy inside and make you realize, yes, I do want this. I do want to play for as long as I can, but I can also enjoy these small moments from of my day to day. Yeah. I love that. I love that too. <laughs> I feel well, like I think... oh go ahead. Oh no, I was just, I was just gonna say um that I feel like kind of doing things outside of soccer on your free time because you do have a lot of free time. Uh, mm-hmm. unless you have like a little job or something, but I feel like doing things on your free time is really important. Like, go explore the town that you're in. Go maybe find a new hobby. Uh, yeah, those things are so important because you're in a whole different country. Like, why not? Like, yeah. I'm never going to be a chance again to, you know, yeah. at least live there, you know? So just embrace it and do as much as you can, honestly. Make but Maya, yeah. Hey, that? Hey, sorry, go Sweet. Ahead. Oh. <laughs> well. <laughs> Well, Maya, thank you for um coming to speak with us on the podcast. You know, we really enjoyed you um telling us your story. And, you know, we hope to speak to you soon. Yes. Thank you for having me. 
No problem. Um. <laughs>